Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 372. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions and answers supplied uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have David Roseanne. David uh, uh, is based in Surrey. Um, no, sorry, not Surrey, West Sussex. <laughs> and uh, he is a leading internet marketer. Um, he can be found at davidrosanne.com. Tim Kappa can be found at onlineownership.com. He's the CEO. He uh, is um, a Google top, con not a Google top, a, a Google product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. Uh, and he can be found at onlineownership.com, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim's on the uh, south coast, I suppose you'd say it would, would be, south coast. No? No, I'm in the Midlands, man. I'm in Middle Earth, the Midlands. Yeah. I am in in the East Midlands, uh, east okay. of the middle of England. <laughs> We're trolls. So, well, my point, I was I was looking at uh, looking at David uh, when I said that. Oh well. <laughs> and Masataki was a webmaster of wasaweb.net. I uh, Masataki is also a uh, Google product expert uh, on the AdSense uh, community. All right, we have um, 11 questions tonight. Let's answer the uh, first one. No, it's not bad. Uh, Shea Chia Low asks, is inline huge CSS bad for SEO? Uh, he said, uh, I know it's hard to maintain uh, uh, in a dev perspective, but in um, a an search engine optimization uh, perspective, would it hurt paid speed a lot or have any other negative effect? Uh, it reduces requests, but increases HTML weight, I think. I think you're right too. Let me know your thoughts or experience. Thanks. Everybody's muted. Um, Tim, so firstly, you're not sharing the screen. Ah, thank you, Tim. And secondly, so um, what was this question? So this question was uh, removing inland CSS help or adding inline CSS and removing multiple CSS files. Is inline huge CSS bad for SEO? That depends. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have a thing there. Um, if that is your only... No, I, no. I, uh. um, I, I think, and I'm not sure because I, I am not really a technical SEO, so what I might, what I say might be rubbish. But surely it's the size of the CSS rather than whether whether it's inline or external, because it will be loaded. Um, wherever it is. So, um, I guess, um, I guess the answer is a huge chunk of anything on your page is not a good thing because it slows down the page. So if you can make your CSS smaller, that would be good, but I'm not sure whether inline or or external makes that much difference but i may be talking complete cods well external would make sense if a visitor is viewing more than one page right then the css wouldn't be repeated if that makes sense if it's an external file it's been loaded it's been cached so if 
a visitor goes from page A to page B, um, instead of having to repeat all the CSS inline on page B again, if there's an external file, that would be cached. So page B's HTML file size would be smaller. I think that that would be the argument for using external file. Um, I personally prefer inline um, because I don't think CSS really adds that much. I mean, in this case, it's a 70,000 character, so that, that seems quite a lot. Um, but I think it reduces the request for an external CSS file and it prevents content reflow. So sometimes you go to a website, I th I'm sure I think we've all had this before, you sometimes go to a website and then some bits of content appear unformatted by CSS because the CSS is an external file. So while the browser is reading and, and applying the CS external CSS file, things move around and jump around. That doesn't happen if the CSS is in line. And so for that reason, um, I personally prefer inline. Also with make external CSS file makes life easy in the sense that you only have to amend one file to affect changes on all the pages that use that CSS file. So in terms of um, management and in terms for in terms of a site where the average number of page views per visit is high, then it might make sense to have an external one. But if I had to choose between the two, then I would choose inline. But that's a personal opinion. Excellent, um, Masataki. Um, excellent. All right, let's call. Cool. There have been a. a there have been a, a, a number of, pers I guess, personal uh, views in, in the answers on, uh, uh, on, on the, the forum. So, yes, I think, I think there is a lot of personal taste in this one. Anyway, there we go. Yeah. Um, logically, you'd go with... Um, I would try and... Yeah, I would also in. try and just look at the size of that CSS file, man. Yeah, it's, it's a fair bit, isn't it? Although it really doesn't take long to process. Um, you know, it's not, you know, um, we're, we're using uh, computers now um, uh, that, uh, like, like uh, run, run servers that uh, process an enormous amount of data. Uh, Oh, totally. Yeah. But you know, if it's if it's an old CSS that was designed and then it's been as a new site, and I don't know, whatever the case may be, but that's it seems quite a lot, man. You know, mm. you might you might be surprised on what you can trim out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the fastest modems these days, it'd be pretty slow, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, um, these 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 days, um, actually, it, it's um, we're we're looking at uh, broadband speeds of about two hundred gigabyte up and down. Um, it's it's uh, you know it, it's there's no comparison to the old days. Do 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 you, do you have that in the in the outback? Look, I don't um, because uh, well, I, I really don't um, need it. But um, yeah, if you want it, you can have it. But um, you know, an old bike bike made my brain move slowly anyway. Um, let's go to number two on our run list. It's from Nathan Nikolai Guidi. The difference between review versus reviews keywords. Um, he said, what, what is the difference between review versus review keywords? Will both keywords show up uh, on each other's search? 
Um, the the uh, the answer is S. That's the difference. But the serious answer is that they they may do, they can do. Um, this is one of those things where you don't really know what Google is uh, doing until you actually test it. So make both searches, have a look, see if um, see if Google is, is um, treating them the same. Um, and as I think someone says further down in the community answers, um, tomorrow it may be different. Um, it's very... Uh, I think it's a bit of a mugs game trying to anticipate um, review and reviews. Um, I think I would. Uh, I think I would not not try and split that particular hair. Um, but yeah, they 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 can do and they cannot do, and it may change tomorrow. Okay. Right, moving right along to number three on our run list. Another one from Shao Chia Lo. Um, it's titled Where to Land Customers. Uh, and uh, he goes on to say, in an ideal situation, we use HREF Lang to make sure people from another country do not land on uh, the EN US page. But if we don't have an alternative page for, uh, um, say, the uh, EN-CA, Canada page, since the product doesn't sell in Canada, uh, should we just let the user landing on the EN-US page uh, that know that they cannot buy the product there? It seems like a bad user experience to me, or how... Uh, um, should I handle this? Okay, let's have a look. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um I think I would. Um, I think I would probably go for consistency and and put a um, um, a Canada page up. Um, and say that the product is, is not available in Canada, um, and apologise for it. Um, but. I don't know. That's yeah. That's my fault. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on to number three on our own list. Sorry, number four. This is from JL Faverio. It's titled, What Determines the Order of the Search Engine Results Pages? He said, when doing a site um, full colon uh, uh, domain.com query in Google, in other words, the site operator, um, what determines the order of those search engine results pages? I love it. I love it. Tom Gooden's. You yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure anything does anymore. I think in the past there was some feeling that the uh, the most important ones were first, but I think it's uh, I think it's just down to chance and how Google is feeling at the time. All right. Which is more or less what Richard Hearn says, I think. Mm -hmm. And he points yeah. out that it's a very rough indication of the number of pages indexed. Yes, it's true. Yeah. All right, let's move on to number five on our run list. Uh, it's titled, Is It a Good Idea to Block a Product Comparison Page? It's from Shayo Chi Low again. Um, he said, um, 
it's just a good idea to block the, the product comparison page in robots text like this and of course on on our page um the scrape from the facebook group um, we don't pick up that um, url but it can be seen on the dumb seo questions facebook group he goes on to say i'm thinking in some case this kind of page can be a good landing page for comparison keywords and i'd agree with you let me uh, know your thoughts or experiences Um, can we flip this the other way around and say, why would you want to block it? Um, and I'm struggling to, to think of why I'm guessing, I'm get, I'm guessing it's because it's, it's a parameter query page. So depending uh, on what product someone's looking at, when then, then they, when then, then they, when they then click compare to similar items, it pulls in different similar products and creates a parameter query um url string mm. for the and it, ultimately it could and i'm thinking it could lead to millions of different types of query strings um and that's what i think they've blocked is the right. query string container yeah what if you've got what if you canonicalize those query strings based on the original product back to, you canonicalized it back to the actual originated product that the person created the parameter string from then you wouldn't need to block in robots txt it would still follow the, the things but it would say okay this is canonicalized back to the orig originating product Hmm. all right um thank you tim um will we move on to the next i'm going to say yes um we're looking at number six from wayne davis he said searching my brand name doesn't give me my home page uh, Wayne said, hi all, a brand, a brand search for my business gives me two results on the top of Google, lucky you. My contact us page and my about us page, not my home page. Uh, is there a reason for this? How can I get my home page to come up in the search when I search my brand? So I had a quick kind of look at that and um his about page has got a good chunk of information, but it's not necessarily just about the company. It's actually what the company does, which is some kind of thing that you would probably have on your homepage. Um, equally, the about page description, I, th I thought was meta description was far better than the actual description on the homepage. So it's just an instance that Google's going, well, you know what? This is actually a better page to show people when they're searching for you because they find better information. Um, and I think if you sort of, um, you know, looked at your two pages and what they are actually about, you know, perhaps move some of that content across to your homepage uh, and, and actually just have an about you section um about the company and not all the products and services that you offer um it, it would then you know be looking at when somebody searched for your brand that's your brand please the please ignore the other shit about fucking backlinks to your home page for that keyword just ignore these muppets <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I haven't looked at this uh, this site, but I I was going to say exactly what Tim has said. It's it's to do with the the quality, depth, and length of your uh, about uh, about us page. 
um, too often um, home pages. Again, I haven't looked at your one. That there isn't a link that I can see on on, on the uh, version of the page that we have here. Um, but too often, uh, home pages have got very very little information on. They have lots of nice graphics and not very many words. Whereas about us pages tend to have lots of words on. So I think that's that's probably what's happening here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's, uh, moving on to number seven on our run list, removing less important pages. Uh, JL Faverio, uh, he said, uh, I just found a Two thousand and nine to two thousand and fourteen. Since it's the same type of content on their in, on their current site, but not verbatim, as far as I can tell, should I have them take it down so as not to confuse users or Google? Um. um <laughs> so. Yeah, it kind of all depends. Yeah, you know, can you can you reuse that content? Can you shift that across to the other side? Maybe just update it because maybe some of the things are slightly neat. But you know, that's a free source of of content. Um, the other thought is, I mean, I would probably shift it. Uh, you don't need to take it down if you don't want to take it down. I'd probably just reskin your navigation, maybe the top line. Um, to so it would match your top line, you know, your your header in the other side. People can navigate properly clearly through, although it's a separate on a separate thing. It then becomes, you know, Google kind of sees it as a uh, as a, as a sort of an integral part of the site. But if I could move it, I would I would shift it to the site. You know, um, it makes sense to have all your content in the same place. Um, and it might also, there might be some gems in there, you know. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Yeah, I guess I guess I would be asking um, if there's any, um, if there's any traffic to that site. Um, if, if it's not getting any traffic, then I would have to have a very close look at what that, content was and whether it is reusable to something useful um, without putting a whole load of work into it um, I think that if the you know if it's trying to trying to breathe some life into something that is not full of life dead then I would put my efforts into creating some nice new fresh content so i think you need to have a look at what's going on and you need to have a a, a very um a very careful assessment of of what those hundreds of posts are like cool thank you david all right let's move on to number eight on our run list this one I'm not sure who it's from, but uh, it's titled Schema Markup, JSON LD or Microdata. He said, which schema markup is good for SEO, JSON LD or Microdata? Um, well, Google seems to point us towards JSON LD. Um, whether I, I believe that that all three uh, options uh, for structured data are useful um, and, and Google will read them. Sorry, fly attacking me. Um, but um, I, I think the, the the real thing about JSON-LD is that it doesn't sit in the middle of your, your HTML and it's, uh, it's a lot easier to handle and it doesn't mess up the, uh, the appearance of your page as some... Uh, as some other forms of structured data can do, um, so JSON LD is a is a fine thing, and I would uh, use that every time. Thank you, David. 
Very well. Okay, let's move on to number nine on our run list, charging through these tonight. Uh, it's on disavowing internal backlinks. Ross Raffin said, say you have a media company, X Corp, uh, who, which, which is looking to rank the subsidiary X Media. The problem is that they've decided in their infinite wisdom to link back to X Media from all of their other properties with the anchor text advertised. The anchor text profile uh, is a few naked URLs and dozens of advertise, uh, mostly from footers. Coincidentally, uh, X Media does not even appear on the first page of results um, for the uh, query X Media. If the goal is to get X Media ranking for the query X Media, would disavowing these advertise uh, anchor texts have any positive impact? Um, Jesus, don't even mention freaking disavow, mate. Whoa, <laughs> no, no, no. If you simply want to change it to X Media, you know, change it to X Media, don't you know, get rid of the advertise, you know. Um, the other thing, what you could do is you do say there's like 201,000 links coming from all seven domains look if it said x media um that would that would be um there yeah, was still a lot of links coming through i think if google understood the relationship between it it wouldn't be uh, uh an issue probably won't because all of them are like x corp this x corp that x corp this and then you know they list in who the people are and it's like x media goes to the x media I, although it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of footer links i would still change it from advertise to x media however here's another thought for you if you're nervous about these 201,000 odd internal links it might make more sense you know you could keep the advertise footer link right but have it going to a new internal page called Advertise with X Media. Yeah, have some information on the page about the X Media opportunities, blah, 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 blah. And then you can click and you can even then enter, you can, you can click through. So, you know, you can create a thing going view X Media homepage, view X Media's advertising propositions and view X Media, da, da, da. That way, all those little links then go to a single internal page, which is about X media and advertising with X media, allowing the user to then make an actual decision. Where does he want to go within the X media site? Homepage, the advertising products, or find out more section within the within this site. Um, those internals will push it to X media, you know, that could be a nice way of, of dealing with it. And that also gives Google clearer understanding on, on the relationship between all of the, the things. And obviously, you know, you've got other seven domains, I'm assuming they all interlink that way. I would probably also look at something similar to that, that makes kind of sense. But if you don't want to do that, just change the advertise to X media. Um, don't disavow anything like that. That's crazy. You'd be disavowing, you know, all sorts of weird shit. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to number 10 on our run list. This one from Lauren Engel. Um, my site has nearly 30 million spammy backlinks. Uh, Lauren said, a site I handle has nearly 30 million spammy backlinks from German and Chinese sites. Uh, does this negatively affect my site slash ranking? The authority score is 73, though, so not so bad. Um, thanks. Mm. 
the authority school, like, like who's authority? <laughs> you know, that, this is a crazy thing, you know. Uh, yeah, who's authority? Anyway, it's definitely not Google's authority. Um, 30 million spammy backlinks. Mm. How spammy, like, what are they? Um, you know, looking at looking at links is is quite a mega thing, um, which you need to do carefully. If they, you know, just real rubbish, just absolute toss, you can, you know, those thirty million is probably broken down to what maybe a couple of thousand domains, probably. Um, so look at the actual domains. And you can just quickly compile um, a disavow for the domains. You you don't have to do the individual links. You can just disavow the entire domain. <coughs> um, <clears throat> so that's quick enough to compile. But you need you need to be sure on on is Google just ignoring them? Has it affected you? Michael, you know, also says just uh, double. You know, have a look at your traffic. Has, uh, do you think it's affected you uh, in some way, shape, or form? You know, look at the traffic over a good uh, period. Um, so, yeah. Um, but you need to be sure of this before you disavow kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um... I should also note Michael Martinez's contribution there. Um, okay, number 11 on our run list, the value of competitive backlinks research. Uh, Rohit uh, wants to know uh, how much is the value of competitive backlinks research. He said, M me, I mean, recently trying to do slash provide competitive backlinks research service, but I'm confused about the value of it. I I never look into competitors' backlinks, to be honest. Um, well, not never. I I very seldom look into competitors' backlinks. If I if I <laughs> there are lots and lots of other things I look at before then, uh, shall we say? um so it's not something that i would be likely to to buy yeah look um if you're in a situation where you know, you're sitting, you're position two or three, they're position one and two or just one. Um, you've been working on the content, you've been working on the site, you know, this thing is as slick as you could possibly feel that you're getting this site to be. Um, and it hasn't budged over a good period of time. Um, then it's probably worth diving in and having a look at are there any opportunities to be had but the point being is if you see a link coming from a let's say a really good reputable uh, another company you know what do you what are you then going to do you still need to do the outreach you still need to then um develop a relationship with them you need to develop the trust you need to I don't know, you know, it's like, why don't you be look, you could be doing that with other people within the industry. It's kind of weird then going, reaching out to these other people and saying, hi, um, you know, we're blah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, I would do it if, you know, you are literally don't know where else to go. You, you've got the site, you've taken it to wherever, your 
content's there, everything's on point, but you just can't seem to shift it. Other than that, but just remember, you still got to, even if you knew where their links were coming from, like, what are you, what are you going to do with that information? Because to me, if I've, and, and th this is the problem, and I can, we get all these emails day in, day out. Hey, I see you, um, I see you mentioned uh, this site on, you know, on, on your site. Uh, and, and we're also da 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 and, and could you, you know, and I'm like, no, fuck off, because that was my intention to mention these guys because they are highly, you know, they're highly relevant to what I was talking about on the site. But you're not. I don't know you. And it's, it's yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? In terms of the relevancy and the value. But you could you could find a couple of, you know, niche little things in that. Who knows? But I don't. I don't necessarily spend time on it. Cool. All right. I know what's going to happen when I press this button. It's thank you for watching time. Once again, we've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. And we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again. But before I go, I, I must thank um, the people who answer questions uh, um, on the internet. Um, Michael Martinez, um, Brenda Michelin, I think, uh, I'm not sure if her name is spelled exactly that way. Um, I, have, I must, must make a point of learning that. Um, and... Um, uh, Stockbridge Truslow, Michael Martinez, um, and of course uh, our uh, panelists who turn up each and every week and uh, make uh, Damasio questions such a, a valuable resource. Uh, people like Masataki Wasa and uh, David Rosam, Tim Kappa, Micah Fisher Kirshner uh, was here earlier on tonight. Uh, Richard Hearn was here a week or two ago. Um, all of those people that make this um, so special and such a pleasure. All right. Um, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. Thank you.